Mathematical models can project how infectious diseases progress to show the likely outcome of an epidemic and help inform public health interventions. Models use some basic assumptions in mathematics to find parameters for various infectious diseases and use those parameters to calculate the effects of possible interventions, like mass vaccination programs. History Early pioneers in infectious disease modeling were William Hammer and Ronald Ross, who in the early 20th century applied the law of mass action to explain epidemic behavior. Lowell Reed and Wade Hampton Frost developed the Reed-Frost epidemic model to describe the relationship between susceptible, infected and immune individuals in a population. Concepts are zero. The basic reproduction number the average number of other individuals each infected individual will infect in a population that has no immunity to the disease. S the proportion of the population who are susceptible to the disease are the average age at which the disease is contracted in a given population. L the average life expectancy in a given population. Assumptions. Models are only as good as the assumptions on which they are based. If a model makes predictions which are out of line with observed results and the mathematics is correct, the initial assumptions must change to make the model useful. Rectangular and stationary age distribution, i.e., everybody in the population lives to age L and then dies, and for each age there is the same number of people in the population. This is often well justified for developed countries where there is a low infant mortality and much of the population lives to the life expectancy. Homogeneous mixing of the population, i.e., individuals of the population under scrutiny are sought and make contact at random and do not mix mostly in a smaller subgroup. This assumption is rarely justified because social structure is widespread. For example, most people in London only make contact with other Londoners, and within London then there will be smaller subgroups such as the Turkish community or teenagers who will mix with each other more than people outside their group. However, homogeneous mixing is a standard assumption to make the mathematics tractable. Endemic steady state an infectious disease is said to be endemic when it can be sustained in a population without the need for external inputs. This means that, on average, each infected person is infecting exactly one other person. In mathematical terms, that is, the basic reproduction number of the disease, assuming everyone is susceptible, multiplied by the proportion of the population that is actually susceptible must be 1. Notice that, this relation, means that for a disease to be in the endemic steady state, the higher the basic reproduction number, the lower the proportion of the population susceptible must be, and vice versa. Assume the rectangular stationary age distribution and let also the ages of infection have the same distribution for each birth year. Let the average age of infection be A. For instance when individuals younger than A are susceptible and those older than A are immune. Then it can be shown by an easy argument that the proportion of the population that is susceptible is given by. But the mathematical definition of the endemic steady state can be rearranged to give. Therefore, since things equal to the same thing are equal to each other, this provides a simple way to estimate the parameter R0 using easily available data. For a population with an exponential age distribution, this allows for the basic reproduction number of a disease given A and L in either type of population distribution. Infectious disease dynamics Mathematical models need to integrate the increasing volume of data being generated on host-pathogen interactions. Many theoretical studies of the population dynamics, structure and evolution of infectious diseases of plants and animals, including humans, are concerned with this problem. Research topics include transmission, spread and control of infection, epidemiological networks, spatial epidemiology, persistence of pathogens within hosts, intra-host dynamics, immunoepidemiology, virulence, strain structure and interactions, antigenic shift, phylodynamics, pathogen population genetics, evolution and spread of resistance, 
role of host genetic factors, statistical and mathematical tools and innovations, role and identification of infection reservoirs, mathematics of mass vaccination. If the proportion of the population that is immune exceeds the herd immunity level for the disease, then the disease can no longer persist in the population. Thus, if this level can be exceeded by vaccination, the disease can be eliminated. An example of this being successfully achieved worldwide is the global smallpox eradication, with the last wild case in 1977. Who is carrying out a similar vaccination campaign to eradicate polio? The herd immunity level will be denoted Q. Recall that, for a stable state, S will be, since Q is the proportion of the population that is immune and Q plus S must equal 1. Then, remember that, this is the threshold level. If the proportion of immune individuals exceeds this level due to a mass vaccination program, the disease will die out. We have just calculated the critical immunization threshold. It is the minimum proportion of the population that must be immunized at birth in order for the infection to die out in the population. When mass vaccination cannot exceed the herd immunity if the vaccine used is insufficiently effective or the required coverage cannot be reached, the program may fail to exceed QC. Such a program can, however, disturb the balance of the infection without eliminating it, often causing unforeseen problems. Suppose that a proportion of the population Q is immunized at birth against an infection with R0 greater than 1. The vaccination program changes R0 to RQ where this change occurs simply because there are now fewer susceptibles in the population who can be infected. RQ is simply R0 minus those that would normally be infected but that cannot be now since they are immune. As a consequence of this lower basic reproduction number, the average age of infection A will also change to some new value AQ in those who have been left unvaccinated. Recall the relation that linked R0, R and L. Assuming that life expectancy has not changed now, but R0 equals L, A so. Thus the vaccination program will raise the average age of infection. Another mathematical justification for a result that might have been intuitively obvious. Unvaccinated individuals now experience a reduced force of infection due to the presence of the vaccinated group. However, it is important to consider this effect when vaccinating against diseases that are more severe in older people. A vaccination program against such a disease that does not exceed QC may cause more deaths and complications than there were before the program was brought into force as individuals will be catching the disease later in life. These unforeseen outcomes of a vaccination program are called perverse effects. When mass vaccination exceeds the herd immunity if a vaccination program causes the proportion of immune individuals in a population to exceed the critical threshold for a significant length of time, transmission of the infectious disease in that population will stop. This is known as elimination of the infection and is different from eradication. Elimination interruption of endemic transmission of an infectious disease, which occurs if each infected individual infects less than one other, is achieved by maintaining vaccination coverage to keep the proportion of immune individuals above the critical immunization threshold. Eradication reduction of infective organisms in the wild worldwide to zero. So far, this has only been achieved for smallpox and rinderpest. To get to eradication, elimination in all world regions must be achieved.